All right, this week we have a sulfur nymph. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into the tying here because I'm gonna wind up explaining a few things that's gonna make this video a little longer than it should be. But uh, to start, we're just going with a size 14 Daiichi 1560 and some 8 aught um, rusty brown thread. Just go ahead and lay a thread base down real quick. And we're going to take some Coke de Leon fibers, four to six ish. And if I can get them off the stem there, we're just going to go ahead and tie these in, measure them out, length of the hook, length of the hook shank, probably a little bit shorter if you're going to go short or longer. I would say go shorter on these. They kind of have a short tail. Um, so there we go. Advance this up to the front just a little bit. And then we're going to take some extra small brass wire. Go ahead and tie that in. And then I'm going to fold this wire back over. I get a little bit more detailed in this nymph than I do most other ones. I and mean, for the most part, I mean, you can get away running a pheasant tail and, you know, different shades and everything. Um, pheasant tail hairs your something like that. You know, I mean, I would say this one in the ISO, uh, the Slate Drake nymph, which we'll do in maybe a couple weeks, we'll get to that one. Um, those two I specialize because I think they have identifying characteristics in them. Um, I'll show you that one once we get closer to the head of this one is where I think the identifying characteristic comes in on this one. I think that sets it apart. Becomes like a target, I think. And my turkey's falling apart on me. Actually, I got a little bump right there that I don't like, so I'm going to build up a little thread base just to help my taper. Getting a little picky here, but bear with me. There we go. So for our body, um, I'm gonna go with three to four strands of this, just a regular Eastern Turkey tail feather. And I like this because it matches the tail a lot better. Um, it kind of has that brown and tan and um, just kind of looks a little bit closer to a sulfur nymph in my opinion. Once again, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything to the fish, but to the fly tire, it kind of looks a little bit, a little bit more accurate. So... You'll see as I start wrapping this what I'm talking about. You can go with just a regular pheasant tail if you want, but I settled on the turkey feather for some reason. Um, these are really brittle, so be careful when you first start wrapping it. And make sure that I'm covering up my orange there. I'm not. I had one little piece of orange sticking out there that would have drove me nuts, but there you can see, I mean, the different little variations in color on the body. And we're just going to wrap this further forward than we have to, but um, we're going to wind up covering up some of this with our wing case and thorax, but I just like bringing it a little bit further forward. Um, add some taper, gives you a little bit more uh, of a natural appearance and then we're just going to take and counter wrap this this thing wants to fall apart let me see what I mean about these things being really brittle and that's why it's really important to counter wrap this with some wire um, if you don't you wind up getting a tooth in there after one or two fish and your body unravels on you and you throw the fly away it's junk But there we go. Trying to clean 
this up a little bit. Getting picky. Bear with me, as always. So then we're just going to advance this back, probably about to the one-third point. And we're going to take some black. Uh, this is just turkey tail dyed black. Uh, we'll say, oh, I don't know, four or five strands of it. And we'll tie this in. And I go with black um, because my... Uh, my buddy Alan owns uh, the Spruce Creek outfit there. I mean, he's taught me so much over the years. Really helped me out a ton. Um, I was out, I was back home, and thinking I was going to be hitting the sulfur hatch. I mean, I was there right in time for it and everything. And we didn't see any bugs that day. Nothing was emerging. And I went in and I talked to Alan. And, uh, he asked me, he's like, well, what color were the, did you pick any nymphs up? And I said, yeah, I picked some nymphs up and looked at them. He goes, well, what color was the wing case? I said, yeah, it was pretty black. And he said, yeah, I'll give it two days. He goes, when you start seeing the black wing cases on the nymphs, because they're typically, you know, like that mottled brown. Because when you start seeing the black wing cases, give it two days and you'll start seeing the, you'll start seeing them come off. And sure enough, I mean, two days later, we're out there and, we're seeing, seeing bugs flying around, so I go with the black just to kind of imitate that. Um, but while I was rambling on about that, I was prepping my feather here. We have just a regular hen feather. I'll get this in. It's a, let's see if we can see that there. There it is. It's a uh, silver badger in tan. Uh, you don't have to get this specific if you want to use just like a regular, uh, oh, what the heck is it, um, partridge skin, um, completely fine. This is just what I settled on for some reason. This kind of looks good to me. So then I'm just going to kind of throw some thread wraps on here and clean this up. And then we're going to go ahead with a dubbing loop. If you want to just spin a rope real quick, that's fine too. I just like the dubbing loop. It gives it a little bit more of a picked out appearance. And I think it looks better personally. But if you want to go with just a regular rope, that's fine too. But this is just a natural rabbit. Pick the dubbing dispenser up here in a second show it to you once I get this in place here we go right there just it's this one right there it's kind of got the tan and brownish look to it and we're just going to kind of work this through don't need a whole lot on this feathers out. If you look at the underside of almost any mayfly nymph really, you're going to have a tan underbody to it. And we're going to cover all of this up with our top materials, obviously. But uh, this is going to kind of give that tan representation that you're after. Tie this off. Now we'll take our hen feather and lay this over top. This is going to represent our wings or our legs. Sorry. And you can get away without doing this step. You really can. Um, I don't know. I just like the way that it looks. So just lay that right over top and when you tie these two materials in both your legs and your uh, your wing case your black wing case tie them in upside down so when you flip them over obviously you're going to have the top side up get 
that trimmed. And then we're just going to kind of peel these back. And then bring your wing case over. And you can see this splits your, your hen right down the center. So you have, wings, you have legs on both sides. And then just go ahead and make it tie this off and then stand it up. Now, before you go any further with this, just get a quick knot in there. That way your thread won't run away from you and everything else unravels because we have the last thing that we're going to do on this. And this is what I had alluded to earlier was the trigger point on this. I said this, I think that the sulfurs and the the ISOs have a trigger point on them or something that distinguishes them um, from other other mayflies and what that is on this is just if you look at a sulfur nymph really close and you don't even have to look at it that close you're gonna see a like a light mm, light a pale yellow pale orange ring right around the head and I exaggerate that that ring with just some amber dubbing if I can get it back here I just throw some amber dubbing in here just to exaggerate that ring because like I said I, I feel that it's a trigger point so I'll just work this right over top here and I'll cover this stuff up there's our and if you look at a natural, it's not near as apparent as what this is right there. Like I said, I think exaggerating it improves your improves your numbers, especially you know when you're fishing on when you're fishing on rivers like the Jay or Spring Creek or something like that. That you know these fish just get so much pressure. It's you really need something to have your fly stand out from you know, everything else that they're seeing. But if you want to, you can go through and you can pick out the underbody on that. You can see the tan. You can pick that out a little bit. But, I mean, once it gets wet, everything kind of just um, sits how it's how you want it to anyhow. So, I mean, you don't have to really get too crazy about picking this stuff out and making it look perfect. As long as you have the profile, you have a good... You know, I mean, a, a decent, decently um, built up thorax, you're going to be in good shape. But there you have it. There's my sulfur nymph. Um, if you guys have any questions on it, and as always, um, leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you. But thanks again for tuning in, and we will catch you next week.